Howdy and welcome back to another Bevy video. Today we're going to add pathfinding to our Bevy games. I've been doing some experiments to get ready for the next release of Bevy, where I'll make another full tutorial series. For one of these experiments, I have a grid system and some units able to walk around the grid and avoid walls, and I've realized that I have enough cool stuff here going on to make a video about. So today, we're going to quickly look at my grid setup, but the pathfinding will work with just about any graph that you can create. Then we'll look at using the pathfinding library to create our paths and to give our results to our bevy entities. And finally, we'll make it a little bit more bulletproof by using bevy's task system to let some pathfinding jobs take more than one frame without lagging our game. So first up, let's look at the grid resource. I don't want to go too deep into this because I'm still evaluating if this is a design I want to go with and recommend, but basically I have a generic grid resource that just holds an array of entities that should all have the component that the grid is generic over. I also have a grid allocation strut that I can use to index into the grid, a simple iteration method, and some automatic insertion and removal systems. So to use this, I just insert a version of this plugin into my app and spawn some entities with the component that the grid tracks in a grid location, and then the grid system should automatically register the walls into the grid at the right slots. Now for the actual pathfinding. Here, I'm using the pathfinding crate, which offers many different pathfinding algorithms, and these should work on any generic graph structure. So if I wanted to do pathfinding on each of the connected rooms in my game instead of on every single tile in the grid, I could. Or you could adapt this into some kind of a nav mesh solution. Today, I'm going to use the A star algorithm, which for this video we're just going to treat as a black box, but if you haven't worked with it before, then I recommend trying out coding it yourself at least once in your life. I'm actually not a big fan of this API because it's a little bit overwhelming. I think I would have preferred some kind of a trait solution over this six generic parameter function, but the example makes it pretty clear what we need to pass into this function to make it work. First up, we need our type n, which will represent a point in our graph. For us, this is our grid location strut, and we want to pass our starting value. Then, we need a function that, given a position, will return all of the connected nodes. For this project, I'm going to use the von Neumann neighbors of the grid node. I probably could clean this function up a bit, but I need to get the four neighbors, and I only want to return neighbors that are inbounds and are not occupied. This function also needs to return a distance value tupled with the location, so I'm doing a distance of 1 for each of these neighbors. If you want diagonals, or you have a different graph, then you should return the correct distance values here. Next, for A star, we also need an estimate of how far away any point is from the goal. I used the math I did in the example, but in other experiments of A star, I found that tweaking this aggressively can sometimes get you a less perfect shortest path, but it can dramatically reduce the runtime. So try experimenting here to find something good enough for game purposes without needing to find the actual shortest path. Finally, we need a function to determine when the algorithm is finished, which for most cases just compares the current point with the goal. This returns back a vector of all the points in the path and the length of the path wrapped in an option. If the option is sum, then I'll return the path, otherwise I return a pathfinding error because there's no path to where the unit is going. Other algorithms in the pathfinding package have a very similar API and it's worth checking out. So far I've been pretty happy with the results from this crate, and the examples are much easier to follow than just the plain type information. Now I want to tie this into our actual bevy game. I have a couple of pawns with some basic AI brains that will wander randomly around the grid. I also have a path component that just holds a list of points for them to visit. In the future, I want to have them able to pathfind a food or task they need to complete, but for now they'll just randomly walk around. Periodically, they'll pick a new point to wander to, and they'll make a request to pathfinding. Here, I already have the task system optimizations in, but if you know the pathfinding jobs will take a reasonable amount of time to run, and there won't be too many calls in a single frame, then you can just call the pathfinding directly here. We'll look at the spawn task function in a second when we cover compute task. I also have a simple system to have the AI follow the path once it's written. Because we know pathfinding is often a heavy operation and we want to support many different pathfinding jobs in a single frame, I think it makes sense for us to bundle this into Biffy's async compute task system. 
If we ran pathfinding naively in a system, then if there are many jobs or if the grid is large and complex, then this might prevent Bevy from advancing to the next frame and stall our game. Using the task system allows us to create jobs and then pull them each frame to see if they have finished. It's really easy for us to set one of these up. I have a spawn optimized pathfinding task function, which can be called from any system to create one of these pathfinding jobs. First up, we need to make a component that will hold our task. Our tasks are going to be associated with an entity, and when the task completes, we'll remove that component from the entity. To create a task, first we get the async compute task pool singleton, and this will let us spawn task. Then we'll copy all of the data we need to create the task. This includes copying the entire grid. We must do this because the grid could be modified in between frames, and this could cause complexities if pathfinding is running when we're modifying the grid. Rust lifetimes will point us in this direction when we try to use a grid reference in our task. I also boxed a grid because I found that for very large grids, I was getting stack overflow errors in the task pool. Box is just a simple Rust way of moving memory off of the stack onto the heap. Now we create our task. Here, we call spawn on the pool and give it the lambda we want to run. Here, all the lambda needs is to call our pathfinding function. I also have a quick helper function that lets units cut corners because I like how that looks aesthetically. I don't want to give the corner cuts as neighbors because I don't want paths to cut through gaps in the wall. The lambda then returns the path. I then add this task in the wrapper component to the AI entity. Next, I add a system to apply the results of pathfinding to the AI path component we created earlier. Here I can query for the task we just created and use the futures light crate to pull the task. If the task is complete, then I will despawn the component holding the task, and if the job was successful, then I'll copy the path into the AI path component. There's obviously a bit of optimization I still plan on doing around these systems, and a lot of this API is experimental and in the draft phase for me, but I still thought there was enough info here that it might help someone. The pathfinding crate is very powerful, and pathfinding is a core part of many game designs. Also, Bevy compute tasks are great for heavy algorithms, and I don't see them getting used enough, so I hope this video demystifies them a little bit. As always, thank you to my wonderful Patreons, and thank you for watching.